Hey guys, today it's me alone from my room. I'm just going to give you a short update on a, se uh, on a session that I just played. I know we addressed this in the last videos already, but you're always asking for screen names, you're al always asking for sites, you want to see graphs and stuff, and we didn't reveal that much yet. So I guess I'm going to give you a short heads up about myself, and then show you some hands from a session that I just played on 1020 Party Poker. Um, my main screen name, and if you're like any into the games that we're playing, or if you rail the, if you play the games yourself, or if you sometimes rail like mid through high stakes poker stars action, you're gonna probably have seen my screen name. I'm Mogli Miranda on Poker Stars. Um, Gremo, aka Caveman, he revealed his na uh, his um, screen name on Black Chip Poker, which is Winning Poker Network. I also play there. And I am Sherlock Homeless, in case you want to rail. I haven't been playing that much there lately, but every once in a while I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in the games and see if I can find an opponent to play me. So, Sherlock Homeless, you're going to find me at like the 10, 20, 15, 30, maybe like 5, 10 tables there. And today I played the session on Party Poker 10, 20. My screen name there is Killer Potato, but it's not going to help you to know that much because you can't rail the action. I think it's anonymous if you, or it is anonymous, if you um, want to rail. So, I'm going to show you a couple of hands that I just played. And I want to show you the session first of all. It was a very nice session. I won about 10 fines, aka 20,000 points for the scoreboard. I played versus a, a very funny fella. He's been actually giving me a tough time lately. He's He's been running very well and crushing me. I always like hit and running for a couple of buy-ins, so that was pretty annoying. And today, today I finally got my revenge. His name is Get Your Shine Box or Get My Shine Box, something like this. He's a really funny fellow. I'm gonna. I just wanted to show you a couple lines that I thought were interesting from the session. So yeah, overall ran very well, of course. Um, so yeah. Let's just jump in the hands. One hand up front. I'm going to just show you like three or four little all in situations where I thought he made some quite ridiculous stack offs. Just one hand to see that, like, what kind of player we're talking about. Um, I call an open raise with a 4 3 suited. Goes check, check on the flop. Turns a 4. I decide to bet 60% of the pot. He calls. Turn, uh, river comes to 10, I decided to bet like small, representing an A's, and he raises, and I obviously have a very easy call. Let's just see what he has. He has the 10 and the deuce. So he, he called the, the turn bet on ace-8-4-4 four, four, with 10 deuce, which pretty ambitious, ambitious, let's put it that way. Just to give you like a, a short idea of how he was playing. So let's jump in the, to the couple hands that I thought were interesting. I open. Oh yeah, I'm doing this basically because you guys were like asking to see hands and I'm, I'm not going to go as, as much in depth at to, like, into, into the strategy of like why I'm taking the decisions. I'm not going to give you like exact range breakdowns and stuff, but I'm going to roughly talk about what I'm doing. So I have a jack deuce. I open and he calls. Get a great flop, of course, top and bottom pair. Decide to see bet. He calls. Turn comes a four. Very nice turn. I'm almost never beat here. He only could have like jack nine, jack four to beat me. Maybe pocket deuces that he slow played. And jack nine, he would also check raise on the flop pretty often, I would think. And then maybe pocket fours that he turned the set. So really not many hands that I should be afraid of. And I go right away and throw an over bet on the turn for value. And he does, in fact, though, go ahead and check raise me, which puts me in a tough spot. We're kind of deep. And it's not like I have the total nuts. I'm not folding, of course, but let's just think of what he could have. He could have like a hand like 10-8 maybe, maybe queen-10 for an open ender, maybe a hand like a nut flush draw or a second nut flush draw that called the flop with a back door and now picks up a draw and doesn't want to call the overbed. Though with the high flush draws, you could probably call just call the overbet and still have showdown value. Anyways, I'm not going anywhere in the turn with my jack deuce, of course. So I call, hoping for a safe river, and it comes the king. 
So now queen 10 gets there. I don't think he ever has a can like king jack or king 9, so I shouldn't be that afraid that he improves to better two pair. In general, it's the same hands beating me, only that queen 10, which could be a part of his bluffing range, now got there. And of course, he goes all in for a pot size bet. But I'm just thinking, come on, guys. This guy, he's too much of a potato. I'm not folding any two pair here. So I put my stack and I call. And what did he, does he show up with? The 10-5 of clubs. Very nice flop call, sir, shine box. Very, very creatively played, for sure. And the $5,580 pot, oh no. Only 5K was the pot, he had a bit more in stacks. Goes to me, felt good to catch him bluffing there. A little bit later, this hand pops up. I open, he three bets me and I call with a7 suited. Flop comes ace, 10, deuce, he decides to c-bet half pot, I have an easy call. Turn comes a nine, and he checks to me, and I could go for a bet, but mostly when I'm betting here, I'm getting action from better, so I just decide to control the size of the pot and check back, maybe go on for a value bet on a, on a safe river. So it checks through, and it comes the seven of spades. He checks to me again, and I'm obviously feeling pretty good about my hand here. Only question is, how big do I want to bet? I could bet small and hope to get called by like a hand like ace five, or he could have some hand like maybe you even hear call with a hand like eight and nine that see bets the flop and turns a pair, or just like a ten that see bets, even though he shouldn't be c betting so many tens, probably. I don't know. I obviously have, or maybe. He, he played a hand like ace king, ace queen this way, then he has a very easy call versus this bet size, versus like a normal sized bet. But what I decided to do versus him, just because he's kind of a potato as we saw, I decided to take a like a merger range and pretend that I'm very polar and try to represent a flush to maybe induce a hero call by him. I could be bluffing with a hand like queen jack here, or king jack that just decides to, to check back the turn. Maybe if I had like king jack or queen jack with a spade, it would be a nice hand to be bluffing here with. So he hits the tank, and finally makes the call, and he shows the pocket of jacks. Very nice call again, he had very good blockers to my bluffing range. It's obviously what you're going to try to have when you're making it a call for more than two times the pot. Well played, sir. Oh, this hand I liked too. I have the pocket fours. I call it three bet, and I obviously get the, the gin flop from my hand, the four, five, eight, rainbow. Not gonna get much better than this. He C bets, and I could go for a fast play, but our hand is so good. On a 6, on a 7, yes, we're going to be unhappy because the 4 straight is going to be there. It's going to kill our action, or maybe he's even going to outdraw on us. But we just have to take that risk. In general, every other card is going to be very nice and safe, and he's going to keep barreling a lot, so we want to slow play our nuts here. We call. Turn comes a 10, very nice card for us. He decides to check. I could be tricky and check back, but it's not like we have... We just want to get some value right away, I think. So I decide to bet, and he decides to put in the check raise, and I'm thinking about Vegas and the fucking Mirage, and I press the call button, wondering what he could turn up there with. So let's see what hand he shows. Ace queen, guys. <laughs> Ace queen, very, very nice check shove on the turn. He almost had a percent of equity versus my hand. He did not hit it though, the 0.0% equity, unlucky pot ships my way. And yeah, that already brings us to the last hand, which is also the favorite hand of mine from the entire match, and maybe the favorite hand of the month, or maybe the year, I don't know. In the end, I guess it was just a bit cooler, but let's still see how the hand pans out. So I 3-bet my ace-queen offsuit, we're about 100 big play, 125 big blinds deep. He calls and the flop comes 9-6-5. I decide to check. He checks back. 
Turn the queen, very nice card for me, of course. I'm only BDV, like, has a weird queen x suited to pair, maybe queen knight offsuit, but I think he would maybe bet that on the flop already. So I'm feeling pretty good about my hand here. Decide to go for a normal sized bet. And he decides to call. River, best card in the deck, pretty much. I have almost the immortal nuts. Unless he has like a suited queen that now boated up, which is very unlikely given that I have a queen myself. And I decide to go with again a bit of an unconventional play. Maybe it's not the best bet size in theory, maybe it is. But I decide to go for the two times pot over bet jam all in. Put him to the ultimate test. Maybe cooler if he has a queen, he might not raise it if I bet normal size. Maybe I can induce a hero call from a hand like a 6-7 suited. Maybe a hand like 9-8 that didn't bet the flop. And we've seen that he likes to make some, some nice and ambitious plays. So I rip it, and he hits the tank. And I'm wondering what he's thinking about, and he's tanking and tanking and tanking. And he finally finds the call. Calls it out for 200 big blinds more on the S, 100 big blinds more, 2K more on the river. Let's see what he shows up with. It's the king and the 10, guys. He called it off with a king 10 high. I guess he was putting me on king jack as a... Wait. He doesn't beat king jack. Maybe he was putting me on, like, a, like jack. Maybe 10x of spades? But I can't have that if he has, he has the 10 of spades, so... Maybe jack, t I guess I could have had jack 10 or jack 8 there. Oh, that's true. Maybe 4 7 or 4 3. That, yeah, I probably would play those hands. So it's actually a good call. Kind of unlucky that he ran into exactly ace queen, even though he had good blockers to. Oh, he did not either. But it does. Ah, it was just like unlucky hand, guys. <sighs> King 10, guys. I don't know what I should say about this. What do you think about his call? Give us a comment. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you want to want us to like give you more short updates just after a session, show the graph or show a couple funny hands, put it in the comments and give us a like so that we know what we should produce for you guys in the future. And yeah, that's it. Peace out and cheers.